Okay, so welcome. Today I am going to give a talk about um, what it is like and how to cope with being with a boarding school survivor. How do you in relationship deal with a partner who has been to boarding school? So, blessings. Okay, so I am here today um, at a place called Ampleforth College, um, which is one of the most well-known boarding schools um, in Britain. It is a Christian boarding school, a Catholic. Now, um, I went to a Christian boarding school as well, but it was Church of England, so slightly different. And I was um, in the area, dropping a friend off just down the road, and I've come for a walk. And I thought, ah, maybe I'll give a talk. One of my subscribers on YouTube asked me a question, saying that she was with a guy who uh, is at, was at boarding school, and she said, you know, how do I cope with this? He's very cold, he's very shut down, he kind of either blows hot or cold, sometimes he wants me to be near him, and then he's like, no, I can't handle you. And she's saying, how do I cope? You know, she's saying, I just can't do it. So I thought, right, well, let me record a video answering her question, and also from my perspective of what it is like to be, have been at a boarding school and you know, just some advice I would give to you if you are in a relationship with someone. I've made a few notes, so I will kind of be referring to them from time to time. So some of the things you might sense with a partner, if they've been to boarding school, is this thing about difficult for them to open up. You want them to say what they feel and they're like, they have real difficulty accessing that. That would be one of the things. Uh, and another thing is like there's little joy or kind of little warmth from them. It's like you want them to get excited or to, yeah, and they're not. They don't have that. It's like there's a disconnect. Um, they kind of cauterize somewhere that it's like, mm, just stiff up a lip and they can't really engage in the excitement. Uh, and another thing is, yeah, they rarely cry. They rarely express their emotions. They rarely get rah, rage or passionate. It's like just all mm, like this. So, you know, some of the reasons behind this that I've experienced in reading some of the books like uh, The Making of Them is that any kind of emotion that I felt, whether it be anger or whether it was sadness, I was um, picked upon. So whether boys would gang up on me, or if I got angry, then they would goad me. Ah, psycho, psycho. So, and I did it very rarely, and yet the boys in my dormitory who did do that, they were ribbed all the time. They were kind of, until, I don't know, it became quite painful. So I learned watching how these other people were being bullied because they were going up or down, that I had to be on an even keel. And the way I did that was I, I attacked myself internally. I used to call myself names and I used to hate myself like any kind of, you know, like, you're a wimp. And I would say that to myself inside because it was preferable to have that than to have someone else or a group. I remember one time being, uh, you know, it probably been four weeks after I'd been at school and I didn't want to be there anymore and I was crying and the whole dormitory so that was at least 20 25 people were in and around my cubicle because we didn't have doors and they were all laughing they're like ah he's not so you know he's not so strong now or he's a bit of a wimp or uh you know and it was humiliating and therefore you learn I learned again this is just from my personal experience you learn that this you can only be stiff up a lip you know you can't show the highs or the lows if you get too happy again you know insults i probably would have been called was gay so if you're like ah oh, yeah i'm having a great time it's like you know what's wrong with you well, anything which 
is is uh, kind of above the uh, it's almost like the the line in uh, you know we have the heartbeat boom boom it's like uh, I've forgotten the, the word for it but so that is kind of one of the reasons that you'll find that your man or woman really struggles to to show a lot of happiness or a lot of sadness it's like it's just oof, like they're dead almost the, the flat line that's what the word so what can you do if this is the case that you have a partner you have a husband or wife who is like this who is like that how i was very shut down you know fortunately i've had a, you know a community of people to support me to to heal and I've also got a woman now who's very supportive to help me to heal. And I've been, you know, I certainly, I cry most days and I find that I've enabled her to open up even more. So the first thing I would say is uh, see their shining. You know, see their shining. Uh, what have I said here? Yeah, love them unconditionally, even with all their stuff. You know, um, we kind of often at boarding school, we feel deep down inside that we're not good enough because we're always being c comparing ourselves with other people. You know, um, another of the things is for me, I was, say, at the bottom, so the bottom to start off with, and then you've got the people who are the year above me, they're better than me. And then when I went up to the next year above, there was people below me. And then it's like, ah, oh, I'm better than them. There's this hierarchical situation. And we used to have fagging at my school. So you used to be able to get the people who were on the year below you to, to do menial tasks, like make you toast or cups of tea or um, go and get you things. Like, I need this, go and get it. Like form of, yeah. Um, the word slavery comes to mind, that type of thing, but, you know, um, and so you have this thing that, yeah, you think you're better than, so as boarding school survivors, we can be very judgmental, and I still really feel that, but I still judge people, either I put them, I can put them on the pedestal, and then I can also see them as less than me, so, um, yeah, so loving your partner unconditionally, just love them. Uh, you know, and I know that's probably what you've already been doing, but it's to keep going, to keep going with it. Um, yeah, and the, the next thing was, remember that the greatest sages and wise people of the world are the people who have had the deepest wounding, and yet they've also transcended this wounding to, to gain wisdom, who had a lot of suffering. And... The thing with boarding school is they have had a lot of suffering, really have. They don't necessarily see it, but you as your part, as the partner, you do see it. You see that they're really shut down or they struggle to feel that they're, you know, they're in a lot of pain. And therefore it's to keep seeing that, that, yeah, that they have the potential to be a really wise being. They really do because they've suffered greatly. And once you start to see that within them, that, Oh, this, this is an amazing person. You already see that, but to really see it on a deeper level that, oh, well, they have the potential to be amazing. And once you start to see that within them, they can start to open up. And this was something, uh, kind of what I really feel, one of the things about boarding school is you learn not to trust anybody. No, but you, you can't trust people. This is just, again, my experience. Don't take this as this is right or wrong. So, you, um, you have what you feel you're your friends, and you'll tell them things. You'll say, oh, yeah, I'm feeling, struggling with this. And then what they do is they go and tell everybody. <laughs> and then you get humiliated. <laughs> and you learn quite quickly not to trust people. It's like, and you, you know, it's the stiff upper lip, the, you know, shut down. It's like, hmm, you, know, you just don't take anything personally. It's like you don't feel, and, uh, and certainly for me, my way was, I didn't have friends. I didn't have connections with people. 
It was like, no, no, I'm going to uh, kind of not trust you because after the first few months of people doing this to me, like um, I'm sharing my, my deepest uh, sense with them and then telling everybody about it, it really humiliated me. So that is one of the things is a boarding school survivor struggles to trust people and therefore you have to be so trustworthy you have to honor your word if you say you're going to do something then you do it It, so they can open up they feel they can trust you and they can start to let go and let the tears i mean like i said to, to cry at a boarding school is like yeah you would get laughed at you're a girl you're a wimp or whatever or you know and so you learn not to do it. So I really would say, become trustworthy, really, totally 100% trustworthy, so they can open up to you. Um, uh, yeah, and another thing was I've written down here is like, the way that we change the world is by changing ourselves. So if you have in your life a partner, husband or wife who has been to boarding school, who has wounding, know that they're also a reflection of you. And the way you change them is not by going, right, you need to go and do therapy, you need to go and do this, da 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 da. It's to do the work yourself. You've got to go and do the healing, to go and do the therapy, to, to go to the workshops, to, to do all of this stuff. Even if you've not got the wounding around boarding school, there is a, a reflection of something that's within you. That's why you've drawn, you know, they're matches. So for me, with meeting my wife, is, you know, I've helped to, her to open up to, to crying more, to feeling her emotions. She flows more with her emotions. In the Native American tradition, you have the, the wheel, and you've got, uh, in the south, is the, the place of emotions. And the emotional um, element is water. And they say that if you stagnate uh, water, then it putrefies. And this is what happens with boarding school survivors. The, the, um, the emotions putrefy, so they get sick. And the, the lady who's asked this question said that her, her partner has had leukemia a few times. And it's like, yeah, because we don't allow the emotions to flow, to cry to feel deeply into ourselves, to know this is our shining, this pain. So it's really, really important that you, you learn to flow, and the way you do it is not by telling them to change. It's you do the work yourself. So, uh, and you say, but I didn't go to boarding school. Yes, but you've got some wounding. Whatever it is, maybe father, mother, something happened as a child, whatever it is, you start to do the work by you facilitating and doing that, you almost, you're leading the way for them, making them feel safe that, oh, maybe I can start to go into this. So, um, yeah. The other thing was, yeah, I've said about trust, but patience is that it takes time. It takes time for you, for them to change really. You know, listening to the Dalai Lama talk about practice, that practice takes time. It takes a lot of patience to, you know, it's like this ongoing process. And it's the same with healing some, something like boarding school. It's a deep wound. And, you know, you could say to them, well, why don't you feel? They just don't know. It's, it's just been kind of trained into them. And it's only by little bit, drip by drip by drip, by practice, by meditation, by doing the healing, getting outside in nature, it's like um, through communities of of benevolent people who are willing to face their their stuff, they start to change. And yet your role almost is just to be completely patient. It's like, and patience is learned not when it's easy, it's when it's challenging. And you know that it's challenging to be with someone who's been at boarding school. You do. (laughs) And thank you so much for your your love and your care, you know, you have in your, your house, your, your family, someone who's 
got a great gift to offer the world. And by you being patient, you're allowing this gift to flower. You know, uh, so, yeah, yeah. So I think that's essentially, you know, what I would share with you is, you know, keep going, keep going. And uh, this is a longer video than I generally do, but I just feel that, yeah. Yeah, it's a big wound and that most people just can't go there and most therapists don't understand about it. Um, I was very lucky that I had a therapist who had worked with a lot of boarding school survivors and she was able to help me work through it. And one of the things I would recommend if, if you're watching this and you're a boarding school survivor is dream work. Start to log your dreams, watch what you're doing and start to notice how it starts to bring up the emotions. So, yeah, that is it really. So thank you so much for watching and yeah, many blessings to you. So take care.